الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا So the brotherhood is by blood as well. Also, the nation, the people of a nation, they constitute a brotherhood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa ila adin akhahum huda. To the people of Ad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent their brother, Hud alayhi salatu wa salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned, Innama al mu'minuna ikhwa. That indeed the believers are brothers to each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'alnaakum shu'ubam wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. O mankind, indeed we have created you from one man and one, fe- man, one male and one female. 
and name you into nations and tribes so that you may come together and get to know one another. So we have brotherhood in humanity as well. So all of these different aspects of brotherhood mean that we have mutual rights and responsibilities towards each other. And I want to reflect on some of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ because if we don't unite our hearts, we don't come together, we don't help each other, we don't support each other, then the strength that we have as a Muslim Ummah, as a community, and in humanity will start to deteriorate and break apart and will turn into different pockets and become isolated. The Prophet ﷺ said in authentic hadith, the believers are like a building. They strengthen and support each other. And the Prophet ﷺ, he went like this. What does it mean that we're like a building? It's that when the building starts to crumble, doesn't mean that we take apart this building and let it fall. No, we try to strengthen each other. If someone is having difficulty, someone's having adversity, we try to be there for their aid and their support and give them the support that they need to be able to function. So this type of support is not just through words, not just through feelings, but it's through action. The hadith of the Prophet Tirmidhi, he gives us practical actions that we can take to help each other and support each other. Sometimes we think it's just monetary. No, just being at the aid of somebody, trying to help them, is a means of gaining good deeds and strengthening the, bond, strengthening the bonds of brotherhood. The Prophet ﷺ said, You're smiling in the face of your brother is charity. Commanding good and forbidding evil is charity. You're giving directions to a man that is lost in the land is charity for you. You see for a man with bad sight is a charity. Your removal of a rock or a thorn from the, or a bone from the road is charity for you. You pouring what remains from your bucket into the bucket of your brother is charity for you. So anything that you can do to help somebody else will be a form of charity for you and it will increase the love between you and it will increase the bonds of brotherhood. You know, sometimes when we're in front of each other, we understand, okay, we see somebody in help, and we try to fulfill their needs, their responsibilities. I want to read a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ to you, which shows us that in Islam, our responsibilities do not end only when the person is in front of us, but one of the most important responsibilities that we have towards each other is to defend the honor of our, of our brother in his or her absence. The Prophet ﷺ said in authentic hadith, if a Muslim defends his brother's honor in his absence, if a Muslim defends his brother's honor in his absence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect his face from the fire of hell on the day of judgment. A lot of times what may happen is that people may come and talk to us about other people. It can be false, it can be rumors, it can be unverified. If we give a listening ear to that, we partake and share in that sin. So it is an obligation and a responsibility that if we hear something about our brother or our sister which is not true or it doesn't concern us, that we say, listen, don't talk about this. If we take that step, yes, it may be awkward, it may be uncomfortable, but we help in stopping sin. We help in stopping sin. And if we, and if all of us, take that step, then there won't be people that will give them that lending ear. So we can play a big role in stopping rumors and gossip from occurring. Another responsibility that we have, as the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned, that if we see somebody going through adversity. Yes, we try to help them as much as possible. But do not underestimate the power of dua in their absence. If you know somebody's going through something, then when you're alone, make dua for that person. And you don't go and tell them, oh, I made dua for you. No, you make dua for them. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that any time a person makes dua 
for his brother in his absence. There's an angel that is appointed. And he says, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the same. So take advantage of this and make dua for your brother in his absence. And this will increase the love between you. How are you going to make dua for somebody and hate them at the same time? Right? So this will make you remove any of the feelings of hatred and malice in your hearts. So we know that we know the importance of making dua and it's good. But what are the consequences? What are some of the consequences? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that every Monday and Thursday, the gates of Jannah are opened and the deeds are raised and elevated. This is also why the Prophet ﷺ used to fast on Mondays and Thursdays. And any person that does not commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his deeds will be accepted and raised to the heavens. Except for two people who have hatred, malice, and grudges between them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the angels, wait, do not raise the deeds of these two hatta until they make peace, until they make truce. So if we want our deeds to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to make peace between each other. We need to learn to forgive each other. We need to learn to respect each other. We need to learn to make dua for each other. We need to learn to defend the honor of each other. The Prophet ﷺ, he also mentioned that it is not allowed, it is not allowed for a Muslim to desert a fellow Muslim for more than three days. It is not allowed. Yes, sometimes we may have conflict. And this is a reality of life. But that conflict needs to be addressed. You have three days. But if you can extend past that, that is not allowed in Islam. The Prophet gives the example of two people. They may have conflict and they see each other. And instead of saying salam, one turns this way and the other turns this way. The Prophet said that khayruhuma man yabda bis salam. The best among them, of those two people, is not necessarily who's right, is the one who starts with salam. The one who tries to make peace and says, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tries to make amends. So I know sometimes we have conflict in our relationships with each other, with our siblings, with the people in our community, with our relatives that last years and years. If we want our deeds to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our hearts, if we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be merciful and forgiving towards us, we need to be merciful and forgiving towards others and towards each other. We know that sometimes we may question and wonder that you know we may have relatives, we may have siblings, we may have people in the community that need help, need assistance. And sometimes we may look at them and think that, you know, why are they always in need? Why can't they help themselves? And this type of mentality. I want to share a hadith that happened, an incident that happened during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, there were two brothers in the days of the Prophet ﷺ. And one of them, he used to attend the circles of the Prophet ﷺ, while the other one used to work. So the one that used to work, he went to the Prophet ﷺ and he complained about his brother. Saying that, you know what, I, I keep spending on him and you know, he should earn for himself and these type of things. And the Prophet ﷺ, he understood the situation of both of the brothers. And the Prophet ﷺ said something which is very profound. The Prophet ﷺ said, perhaps you are being provided you are being provided for because of him. What does this mean? This doesn't, no one should take this and say that we should depend on others rather than Allah. No. What this means is that when we help people, when we help others, we go aid and assist others, try to take care of others' needs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of our needs. When we ask about others' children, others' family, others' health, and we try to help them, assist them, aid them, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of everything in our lives. 
So as we know the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the authentic hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to be in the assistance of his servants as long as they continuously assist each other. And we know the statement, Kama tudinu tudan, that how you treat others is how you will be treated. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that unites our hearts. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that any grudges, malice, ill feelings that we may have towards each other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes these feelings. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He forgives us. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He guides us all. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa lisaadu muslimin min kulli dham wa astaghfiruhu inna hu rafu rahim. الحمد لله على فضله وإحسانه وأشكره على توفيق ابتلاني وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله. You know, I mentioned four or five categories of brotherhood that are mentioned in the Quran. And one of the things that we have to remember that one of the benefits of understanding these concepts is that it allows us to coexist. Even our brothers from blood, right? Our siblings. Do we agree on everything? No. People from the same nation, will we agree on everything? No. Even our brothers in faith, do we agree on everything? No. Our brothers in humanity, do we agree on everything? No. But, because of that concept of brotherhood, because of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, even though we may disagree on certain issues, we respect each other enough to be able to coexist. The Prophet Sallallahu uncle, Abu Talib, he disagreed with the Prophet Sallallahu in terms of faith. But can anyone say that the Prophet Sallallahu did not respect him? No one can say that. And can anyone say that he did not respect the Prophet Sallallahu No one can say that. So when we have this concept of brotherhood, it teaches us how to peacefully coexist with others, even though we may disagree with them on certain issues. Another aspect of brotherhood is that it teaches us empathy. One of the biggest problems that we face as individuals, as an ummah, as a community, is that looking down on others without understanding what they're experiencing and what they're going through. But we, when we understand this concept of brotherhood, we think about things from the perspective of others. And that's why we make du'a. We don't know what the circumstances of certain people are and what's going on in their lives. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them. It's very easy, very arrogant to be able to sit and just say that I can't believe that this person is doing this. I can't believe that they're doing it. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, you do not know what you would do in that same situation. So you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you hear or see something and someone struggling, that oh Allah, remove their struggling and their difficulties from them. And give them peace and guide them all, guide us and them and everyone to the straight path. If we don't have this concept of brotherhood, if we don't have this understanding of coexistence, of empathy, then we will go crazy. Because people need people. If we start to isolate ourselves from everyone we disagree with, then what will happen? We'll develop this arrogant, judgmental attitude and we'll have nobody around us. And that will lead a person to become crazy because part of us being insane is that that we need other people to help us grow, support us, and help us understand, give us advice. So I want to close with a hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which you all know. But it's important for us to remind ourselves and implement it in our daily lives. None of you truly believes, meaning there's a deficiency in our iman. If we don't love for our brothers what we love for ourselves, so again, help each other, make dua for each other, advise each other, and defend each other's honor. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He unites our hearts. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He eases the suffering of people all over the world. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us in all of our affairs. قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اعداءك اعداء الدين ربنا اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا ظلا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم فستذكرون ما يقول لكم وفوض ابرير الله ربنا اصلكم بالعباد والسلام